So welcome back friends. You know what time it is. It's time for the Wildland Firefighter Sawyer Kit. You guys asked for it. A lot of folks said, yeah, please do it. We'd like to see that. Um, and I would like to share with you what I've put together. Now, this is not the end all be all. There's guys that uh, probably have a better kit than, than I have that have been doing it longer, that have thought of some things that I hadn't thought of, but this is what works for me. So let's start with the saw. Well, first off, what is a, a Wildland Firefighter Sawyer? Well, there are three levels uh, that you can achieve uh, in the fire service. You can have your A, B, and C fallers. You know, your low end is going to be qualified, certified to basically do uh, simple bucking, cutting, uh, clearing off of trails and stuff. And then you're going to go with your mid-level fallers, which can do, you know, up to a certain size of tree. And then, of course, your advanced fallers, which typically come out of logging, that have a lot of experience, are going to be the ones that are cutting down the dangerous snags. So, but... Even regardless of which one you are, most of these things are going to translate uh, very well. So what is the saw of choice of the wildland firefighter? Well, everything that I think I've ever seen on a fire, I don't think I've seen anything that wasn't a steel. Um, and typically what is being ran are the, were the early ones, were the 440s, uh, the 460s, uh, the 461s like we have right here, the 441s, those, the big professional saws. The entry level, well, I guess that that's that is the not the entry level, but that's pretty much where you start for professional falling saws for Western saws. Why is that? Well, as you as you may or may not know, steel has multiple levels of saws. They have their homeowner grade, then they have their maybe what you would call a prosumer grade, and then they're going to have their professional grade. What's the difference? Well, cost, for one, the pro saws are double uh, what some of the other saws are, but what you get is you get a more horsepower, you get uh, a more rugged build, you get um, big um, you get big jaws, or my mind's going blank right there. Please tell me in the comments what that is. Uh, spikes, <laughs> big spikes, you get um, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, the portions of the cheaper saws that are plastic, you're going to get the uh, aluminum instead, and on and on and on, compression releases, and they're just... They're just more robust. They're designed, they're 100% duty cycle saws, meaning that they're designed to run full shift all day long. Bars, um, we run long bars out here. This is not a long bar. This is what, I don't know, a 25, maybe 28. But if I'm gonna go on a fire, I'm gonna take a 32 inch bar uh, and it's going to be a lightweight bar. There's new bars out now that the full center has been milled out and they press in a lighter material. I don't know if it's a composite or if it's aluminum, makes a tremendous difference. Wouldn't think like you wouldn't think that it would, but hold your arm out with some weight on it. You know, you get that 32 inch bar is a long saw. So that's basically the saw. Now I heard from a friend of mine that works with the Forest Service that there is a complete hold um, when it comes to the U.S. government. They're not buying any more steel saws because of a vapor like lock problem. And you can go online and watch these videos, and they're pretty spooky. What's happening is that these saws are building up. There's pressure building up in the tank. And when you open them to fuel up, it sprays out really drastically in some cases. Um, and that's a big problem. If you're working on an, a wildland fire and, you, and you're active fire and you step off the line and you're going to fuel up your saw, which you're going to do many, many times a day, and you crack that, uh, that gas, the lid, and you have a geyser of fuel that sprays out, maybe it ignites a fire, maybe it even ignites the firefighter, it gets on your clothes, it gets on your, on your gloves. They need to fix that. That's a huge, huge problem. So I have heard, and I haven't verified this, but there are no more steel saws being per purchased until they sort that out. So I think with that sort of bu buying power, I would imagine that it will be sorted out ASAP, um, I would think. Or Husqvarna might step up and take over the market, which isn't a bad thing either. All right, so you're gonna have, a, in addition to your saw, you're gonna have to have a cover for it, you know, safety, the government, Safety Sally lives at the federal government housing, so uh, uh, there is going to have to be some sort of a cover because you carry your saw, they don't want anyone to get it cut, which I'm not opposed to it. This is a, a Dolmar. A Dolmar, a Dolmar is, a, is a gas can slash oil can that you're going to have for your chainsaw. There's going to be two compartments. We're going to have bar oil because we need to run bar oil uh, to keep the, lubric the chain lubricated as well as our two-stroke mix on one side. And you'll notice that one side is only half as big as the other because usually, if your saw is oiling correctly, you can fill your gas once 
Okay, when you fill your gas, your bar oil will last through two tanks. So it's when you when your gas tank is empty, your bar oil on your thing is usually going to be half full. So that's that's why it's that. So this is really nice. I carry mine with a, a little beaner on it because it's I'm always hanging it on stuff. Um, I don't want it to bounce away on the engine and just a little piece of webbing. I can't tell you how useful this is in even in daily life. Now this one I've had around for 20 years. Um, man, this is back when they really made them good, and the, it used to have the. Uh, you know the little accordion nozzles that came off there well one of my subscribers and i'm sorry i don't remember who it was gave me the night the best tip he said do you know that those are threaded on the bottom so he said yeah did you know that those are threaded on the bottom of that and it takes it perfectly except it accepts perfectly a an oil like a quart of oil you buy for changing your car it, fi fi it accepts those caps and it does I don't know, man. It's the cool. <laughs> it's it's the coolest thing. So I have, I, you know, those things will fail on you, and then they, they crack and fall off. And so um, I have used these, and they've worked out great. Uh, it's been really wonderful. So this is a Dalmar. I've never heard this called a Dalmar outside of wildland firefighting. There's all sorts of different names and nomenclature for things that that, that just don't exist anywhere else. I don't know. That lo a lot of tradition. Hard hat, of course. We covered that previously. Uh, wedges. Uh, you, I'm going to carry two full-size wedges and you carry nylon wedges uh, for the very reason you can see right here. See how that's all cut? Uh, my granddad, when we used to cut wood, you know, before these weren't always available, there was only metal wedges uh, and he had bought aluminum wedges. I remember that and I asked him, why granddad did you buy those aluminum wedges? He said, well, if I'm falling timber and I run my saw in there, the aluminum is softer than the steel and it will uh, not destroy the chain. And then they've went to these plastic ones, uh, which are even better. Uh, so I'll carry uh, two full size ones, uh, as well as two smaller ones I'll show you here in a minute. Um, I'm also gonna carry, this is gonna be my faller's belt right here. Now, not everyone does this, but I'm seeing it more and more. I've, I've actually, I actually saw a guy on the fire last year for the first time that was a, that was a um, high level faller that, that was using the, the, the aluminum scabbard. This is the uh, Grizzly Peak Enterprises ma made in Idaho. Uh, these are the best, uh, absolutely the best. So um, you're going to go out there, usually you'll have a pounder, which is a special tool uh, that's kind of a Pulaski with a flat edge on it for pounding wedges. I like to have, I, I just carry a small axe and I always take my small forest axe and yeah it's a little bit light on the light side for wedges but I like it if I need something bigger I'll use a pounder uh, but this is uh, I always have it on me and it's not I don't leave it leaning against the tree it's always on my person and the nice thing about the scabbard is that this sits if you're right-handed right off your uh, on the right side right on your right hip uh, you can reach around you can grab it you can use it and then you can drop it and put it back in and it doesn't ever come out I've never had it come out also I'm gonna have hooked on tethered on here a, uh, a scrunch tool. This is a the chainsaw tool for tightening the chain, removing the spark plug, and I take a little drill or drill, I drill a hole in it, and I just uh, wrap a piece of P cord around that, and I hook it to this little brass link on there, this leather deal, and I always have it with me. You'll lose these if you don't if you don't have them tethered, and you you, you need it all the time. So that goes on the follower's belt, and then what I'll have over here on the other side is usually an IFAC. So an IFAC is a is a has kind of come out of a combat vet from combat veterans um, a personal first aid kit to deal with massive blood loss and massive trauma which is what you're going to have from a chainsaw wound right and so I'm, what i'm going to have in an ifac is going to be a, a cat tourniquet i'm going to have a, a israeli bandage a compression bandage and uh, some sort of a quick clot the, and the purpose for it is not for put, fixing a boo-boo on your finger this is uh, if you drop a chainsaw bar on it someone gets really hurt you can stop the blood deal with the blood loss um, and so I don't have it on here now because I only have I have two of them but they're on other stuff things so when I go on a fire I will pull one off there some I don't have I can't duplicate everything it just gets too expensive uh, but also what I keep on here for now are, are one of these really wonderful folding dump bags these are made by Coaxure up in up in Washington um, and what it is is it's a it's a bag that gets really big uh, really big so you can drop stuff in there and if you wanted to carry extra fuel bottles or bar oil or whatever or you could just drop your IFAC in there these are really handy to have and and I, I've even kind of been back and forth carrying these on my uh, wildland pack but uh, very nice they're molly so you can weave them into something they're really good for even for shooting you can use it for grabbing extra magazine stuff so I keep that on there and this is my faller's belt uh, I'm not going to carry a tape you know, a faller's measure like or a 
a uh, loggers tape on there because I'm not concerned. We're not cutting dimensional lumber. We're, we're this is other other stuff. This is just firefighting stuff. So also I'm going to have a this is a this is a shoulder pad. This is a, a you'll see that loggers use these um, fallers and have used them for years. And what it is is a high quality felt, a thick felt, and there's slits in there with a nice soft uh, rubber leather leather outer that's stitched on there, and, and that's designed to go through your suspenders because loggers wear suspenders on their uh, on their what they call rags. So loggers are the clothing that they wear. You know they cut the hem the hem off uh, so that uh, they don't. When you're walking on logs with limbs and things, if you get caught up on that, the hem is reinforced. It will you'll fall and it'll you can get hurt. So they cut the hems off, and you'll see loggers walking around. You know they look like they have high waters on. Well, that's the reason why they cut the the the, the hems off. So if they do get caught on a nub or or a branch or something, it'll simply tear. So guys that have been out working, you know, for a long time, you'll see that their leg, their their pants are shredded up. They they look, they look like rags, and that's what they call them. Like yeah, these are my rags. Uh, they'll wear that, but they'll also wear uh, this on their shoulder. So this the the suspenders will weave through there. I'll weave this through the the uh, risers on my pack, uh, and this will just park right there. Because when you're carrying your chainsaw up on your shoulder, this protects you. Sometimes you'll walk miles and miles carrying a chainsaw, and it's really uncomfortable. It really starts to hurt and it will tear up and cut up your pack if you're not using the guard all the time, which seems to happen. So I'll carry that. I don't want it on there all the time, but if I am gonna be working extended as a, for an extended purpose as a faller, I'll throw this on really quick. It's very nice. Of course, we're gonna have our chainsaw chaps. These are on the short end. Whenever I have inspection, I have to kinda, I have to be sagging with these things because they don't quite, they're supposed to cover uh, all the way down to the boot and there's a little bit of a gap on there, but I can, uh, if I yank them down a little bit, I can pass there because I like the short shorter ones because they're easier to move and I'm more nimble um, but you might not be able to get away with it so quality pro chainsaw chaps are going to be a must I'm going to bring you in close for the replacement parts and how I keep the saw up and running um, and a few other things uh, that I keep right here this is the bag made by my friend that does uh, re the recycled firefighter or re recycled firefighting I think it's a recycled firefighter, but he makes these really d robust bags and tool rolls out of old uh, single, double, it was double jacket, old fire hose, which is tough, tough stuff. With, look at the size of that zipper. Man, that's awesome stuff. So let's take a look inside this. As a sawyer, it's one of your primary responsibilities is you gotta keep your tool running. That is your tool and guys are depending on you and you have to keep that thing running. And so what, if you're out there miles and miles and miles and you lose your bar nuts, you're out of commission, so it's 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 poor planning. Poor planning um, not to have these extra parts out there, and I see it all the time. I I have loan guy stuff. I've got their saws going again for just lack of. It, it's inexcusable. I mean, it's not their fault either. They're coming out of college and they're getting some training, and some training is good and some is bad. We happen to have the gold standard here with the guy, my friend Roland, that runs the uh, Sawyer. Uh, the training here, uh, he actually wrote the curriculum for the whole na nation and he is tough. And if you come out of, out of there a certified follower, you indeed know what you're doing. Okay, starting off, I'm gonna have a couple files here. I'm gonna have a round files. Uh, of course, everything that we're gonna be using, all the chain are gonna be round files because round files, uh, the edge lasts longer than the um, than a chisel chain. Uh, then we're gonna have a raker file or a depth gauge file on there as well. We'll just leave that little blue thing out there. That's a nice pre presentation deal. So in here, I'm gonna have my small pieces, and this is nothing more than just, I didn't have a really good plastic case to protect my spark plug, so I, this is just, one of my little silky saws came in that. I'm gonna have a spare spark plug. I'm gonna have some spare clutch springs. These are the springs that, if you take off the side cover, that are gonna uh, hold the, you know, the activate the clutch, these things can break. Um, good luck getting that replaced when you're out in the middle of nowhere. It's a simple thing. Go, next time you go to the saw shop, just get those. Uh, an extra pilot bearing, in case that goes bad on me. I'm gonna have uh, an extra, actually I have, should have two bar nuts in there, but I stole one out of there to give to a guy last year, and I just now realized that. And an extra wear pad. These are uh, top and bottom, they're the same wear pad that goes on the inside cover. And they seem to fall out, they seem to, I lose them all the time. Gonna have an extra fa factory uh, elasto start, an extra pull rope uh, with handle. Um, you're not gonna start your saw without that if it breaks and they break, they do, they, they break. And I'm gonna carry in here also two mini wedges. 
I really like these mini wedges. They're sometimes um, they're just the right thing for the job. They're a whole lot easier to carry than these big ones. And I don't want to carry four big ones. That, that's a lot of weight. These are heavy. Uh, so I can kind of supplement that with the two little ones. And they fit in your back pocket really good and they don't fall out and then they're, they're just good to have. I'm also gonna carry a, a killer tree tape. This is how you mark something. If you, if you find a tree that may be too difficult for you to cut or you just don't feel safe doing it, you don't have the skill or, or the experience, you can flag that. And this is universally understood on the fire ground. Don't get near that, stay away from it. You can flag a killer tree with that. I'm gonna carry a file handle. Um, these can, <clears throat> yeah, you can file without a file handle, but they, the tangs on them are pretty sharp and it makes it pretty nice to have a little handle on there. I won't permanently affix it because make sure you get a file handle that can fit both both your files, your rat tails, as well as your, your little flat file. I'm gonna carry in here a, a screwdriver to adjust the carburetor if need be. I'm gonna carry, I carry a handful of extra spark plugs. And the last thing I have in here, I've got two files, I've just got an extra one in there, which I don't really need, but uh, right there. So the last thing are chains. And I take four chains, um, either brand new chains or chains that you sharpen. I, I see, <laughs> you should see some of the, it's one thing, it's hard to learn how to sharpen a chainsaw. And uh, man, I have seen, uh, you watch those poor kids coming out, they went to a three day chainsaw school and and they're cutting and they, they get, the chain gets dull and they're out there trying to sharpen on the side of the, uh, it's just, it's tragic. It's absolutely tragic. I end up filing chainsaws all, all night for these guys. Um, I take extra chains. So I've got a sharp, that gives me five total. So I can go, should be able to go all day on this and then I can sharpen when I've got some time. Usually, you know, like the military, I'm told it's a lot of hurry up and wait. And the same way with the fire, you always have some downtime when you need something to do. So I think it seems, makes more sense um, and it just is better style to keep your saw up and running, keep keep your guys um, supporting your guys and, and helping them out. And when you when you have to put a chain on, put a new one on. It takes you should be able to do it in 90 seconds, two minutes, um, and then not have to sit down for 20 minutes and file on something awkwardly, and then and then go back and file these when you have some downtime. So take a good a good saw. I think will take extra chains. You determine how many you're going to need, but I. I take four plus one. So that's it for my Wildland Firefighting Fallers kit. That's what I've put together. If there's uh, something you think I should add or something that you've had experience with that has helped, let me know in the comments. These things, we learn from each other. That's why we do these videos. These things are always changing and new technology comes up. Bugs goggles, I just saw I forgot that. Wire, wire mesh goggles uh, for safety goggles. Everyone's using these because they uh, don't fog up a wire mesh. You want to know how you can tell an experienced faller from a newbie? Here's what happens on fires, right? So, young guy gets his chainsaw certification and he is stoked. It's a badge of, badge of honor. I mean, it really is. Everyone wants to be on the chainsaw, of course. So what he does is he takes his bugs goggles and he puts them on his helmet like this. You'll see it all the time. They put them on their helmets and you know, and what they're saying, you know, it's a humble brag. <laughs> what, they're, what they're saying is, is that, hey, check it out. I'm a chainsaw faller. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a certified faller. I've got my bugs goggles because no one that wasn't running a chainsaw would, would wear these. <clears throat> and so they, I think, <clears throat> more than, more importantly than it being a convenience thing, what it is, is it's a bragging thing. But anybody who knows anything about uh, this goggles these bugs goggles is that as soon as you do that it mashes all of the foam uh, around the face and then they they don't seal very well and they're uncomfortable and it's not smart so anyone who knows anything with any experience when you see that guy with the bugs goggles on, on his helmet uh, you kind of have to kind of give a little snicker because you know well someday he'll learn uh, the croc proper way to wear them is you wear them around your neck <laughs> just so you know so if you're a new if you're a new uh, feller new sawyer um, don't do that don't be that guy uh, you can laugh at him if you see him what were we saying click a thumbs up if you enjoy these videos uh, please comment I always enjoy that uh, let me know what you think and uh, that's it we'll see you guys on the next video